Let's start with that one right there, your trip to uh, South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. Okay. What uh, What did you find out while well, you were traveling? You, you know, I went out there. I think you know, uh, and most of our, our listeners know, Alan, that I've been on, you know, in the leadership on the Armed Services Committee. And uh, I went out there specifically and spent 13 days, and I'm talking about to the Philippines, to Taiwan, to Seoul, Korea, uh, Tokyo, Guam, Okinawa, and, and that whole region out there. And the thing that there are two th- huge threats that directly affect us. One you and I have talked about before, and that is the guy uh, Kim Jong Un in North Korea. Uh, he is now he has demonstrated on November the 28th that he can fire a rocket with a range that could hit uh, Enid, Oklahoma. I mean, this it's no longer something he might be able to do in the in the future. He demonstrated that he can do that. Now, people will argue, he, could he have done that with a payload? Well, I'm not sure he could, but that's nonetheless, he's, he's gained that, that, uh, that ability. Now, when we were in these countries, you got to keep in mind that all of these are our allies that I mentioned, and they're all in a matter of just a few miles from North Korea. And so their threat from North Korea is greater than our threat here in the United States. But the other new threat that is out there comes from China. I mean, China has been uh, making this huge move throughout the world. And and in terms of the South China Sea, in the area that we're talking about, China is now reclaimed land. Now, this is hard to explain to people because it's something they'll say, well, he can't do that. He doesn't own the land. How can he reclaim it? What he has done is taken areas that have the beds. What do they call this? Yeah, the coral reefs. Uh, and, and then he has pumped the sand on top and, and created islands. And right. those islands that he's created so far have now exceeded 3,000 acres. That's new land filled with, and it's all filled with armaments as if he's preparing to go to war. And that's taking place right now in the South China Sea. So it's a scary thing. It's, it's intimidated our allies out there, the ones I just mentioned. And so that's, that's a huge threat. So we have two new threats in that part of the world that we need to be aware of and we need to uh, start preparing uh, the confrontation for. Now, Senator, it, it will, from your opinion, I mean, I know you're really close to the military part of it. In, in your opinion, is that solved by our increasing our military force in the area? Is it um, better served by trying to talk them off the ledge? Which, which well, direction? Uh, well, that? the first thing is we have to reassert our position, that's America, in, as a leadership leader of the free world. Now, I don't want to be unfair to Obama. But if you'll remember, nine years ago, when he became president, the first thing he did was go around the world apologizing for the aggressive attitude of the United States and and our military uh, power and all of this. And so as a result of that, he downgraded the military to the point that other countries are aware of this. The two countries that concern me the most are those that that are near uh, our capability, and that's China and Russia. Uh, And so... What we need to do is now do exactly what this president, new president is doing, and he is saying to them, for example, uh, in in uh, Syria, uh, if you cross the red line, uh, we're going to come after you on chemical weapons. And he did, and he just uh, and it did exactly. So he's now gotten tough with these guys. Now, uh, uh, another good example would be when Kim Jong Un made the statement, and we all remember this. He said, I have a button, I can press it, and I can. Uh, we have the capability now, we can reach mainland United States. His uh, response, uh, our president's response was, yeah, we have a button too, we are way ahead of you in that technology, and if you try that, we'll blow you off the map. And immediately, just hours after that, he contacted, I'm talking about Kim Jong-un, contacted South Korea and told them that we're now going to Uh, come down to the Winter Olympics and join you, and they are now communicating with each other. So, you know, the the times have changed, and and that's the best answer I can give you. We're becoming the world leader that we've been since World War II. Good stuff. That's a great answer. Um, Gaining respect worldwide again. That's right. And uh, I think we all know the cases of what happened when uh, the previous president was there, he, he drew the line in the sand and, and retreated from it in, in each case. Now, the other thing that is going on right now that 
I would invite you, uh, if you would, Alan, I've mentioned this before, but our website is inhoff.senate.gov. If you could write that down and remind people, there are th- some things that we have that I think you would find worthwhile. For example, you and I talked before about the overregulation and how that has been a deterring effect in, in terms of our, of our economy. And, mm-hmm. and we now have, I have a list of 71 of the regulations that were there during the Obama that we have either done away with or are in the process of doing away. I'll give you an example. If you talk to the farmers, not just of Oklahoma, but throughout uh, America, they'll tell you of the regulation that came from Obama that was the worst one for farmers was changing the jurisdiction of our water from the states to the federal government. The fear being that uh, once they, uh, you know, you, you get out there way west of uh, Enid, it gets pretty arid out there. And yet that would be in the minds of the Farm Bureau a wetland in the eyes of the federal government so that we'd have another whole team of bureaucrats crawling over all of our farms. Well, if you uh, use the, the website, you can pull up the 71 regulations, and that's a, it'll be an eye-opener to, uh, to our listeners out there. I, I hope that they'll do that. Then, of course, the other thing that, that I'm concerned about, in Enid being the home, of course, of our, of our great trainers that they do out there at Vance, I've mm-hmm. always been very proud of them, and the reason that we've been successful in all five of our military uh, operations in Oklahoma is community support. That's a major thing that we do that other people don't do, and we certainly, Enid has come through and and uh, has, has helped Vance in ways that make it very easy for me when a BRAC round comes up uh, of showing that we're the ones that uh, need to be in the spotlight uh, defending America. And so I, I know that uh, what the people in the Enid area are aware of what happened to our military during the Obama years, and we're under under a fast rebuild right now, and I feel very good about that. And we've got the sorties flying over us every day to prove it. That they yeah, you got you're right. You're right. <laughs> on here, Senator. Hey, let's uh, let's take a moment and and talk about probably one of the if not the greatest human being that uh, graced our lifetimes, uh, the Reverend Billy Graham. Boy, um, is that, it, you know, he is, uh, not many people are older than I am, but he was <laughs> one who did reach the, some a pretty ripe age, and he was all the way up there. He was the hero. I remember back when in my old Army days, that's when I became familiar with him, and I had occasion to meet him. My wife jokes around about it because every time there's a rerun, I don't care how old it is that comes up. Sometimes you can find him on Saturday nights. I always listen to that. He, is, he was my hero for a long period of time. And as we're speaking right now, right now, Alan, uh, I'm in the, uh, the, the nation's capital, and just right above me, he's lying in state. And so uh, a great American, a great follower of, uh, of Jesus, and, I, you know, he's, he'll be sorely missed. Absolutely. I, uh, I, I, it's interesting to watch his crusades and, and the televised crusades when he, at the end of it all, uh, when he do the altar call, and he looks at the camera and he goes, I don't know when this is going to play again, but I know it'll play again. And, and he has the same message each day. And like you say, it's, it, it, you remember those lessons that he taught when we were younger, and it's, oh. uh, it's timeless messages. And, uh, and every time I hear the, the, the song, uh, 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 that he used to always, uh, they used to always play at the end of it. Uh, just as I am. Just as I am, yeah. And yep. that's, uh, every time I hear that, what, it's the guy's name, the great singer that was always on there. I, oh. I can't remember, I, just, I was trying to think of that a minute ago on another station, I, for, and I didn't do it. Anyway, uh, he, he was great. He's great. Yeah. Senator, I appreciate your time, and uh, you be safe, your travels, and uh, our thoughts and Prayers are with the Graham family, but our thoughts and prayers are with you, too, for what you do. I well, know you put in harm's way all the time. We don't talk about that, everyone. We need well, to. I, I can always feel the prayers. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You take care. We'll talk to you when we see you, okay? Th- thank you, Alan. All right. See uh, you later. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.